Okay, and um, welcome to our audio abstract for the recent study, Hamstring Injury Prevention in Soccer, Before or After Training. Thanks to Rob Pacey for the invitation, to my co-authors for their efforts, and to the New South Wales Sport and Injuries Committee who uh, funded this, this research programme. The principal objective uh, in the study was to examine the adaptive response to injury prevention exercises delivered either before or after regular football training sessions. For the purpose of the study, we focused exclusively on hamstring injury prevention and specifically the Nordic hamstring exercise. And we tackled this issue because there's some conjecture in the research literature as to when is the best time to schedule eccentric-based injury prevention work around your routine field training sessions. Now, as you can see in figure one here, we started off with um, 42 players and they were randomly allocated into one of three groups, a control group and two training groups who performed a 12-week Nordic program, either directly before or directly after training sessions. And you can see the program we delivered um, here in figure one. Pre and post the program, the players came into our lab to determine eccentric hamstring strength using an isokinetic dynamometer. We also collected images of the biceps femoris muscle to look at the nature of the muscle architectural adaptations. And you can see an example of a, an ultrasound image that we took in, uh, in figure two there. Not surprisingly, um, we found that um, peak eccentric hamstring torque improved with the Nordic hamstring exercises um, by approximately 12%, and that was irrespective of, of when it was scheduled. But of more interest to us was, was figure three here, which um, showed greater Nordic-induced strength gains in the order of about 20 to 30% um, in the last 30 degrees of knee extension, particularly in the before training group. Now, in this position, the hamstrings are, are elongated and may be vulnerable to strain injury during an eccentric contraction. And these findings, again, support the utility of, of the Nordic hamstring exercise. Now, whilst the strength um, gains were generally equivalent, the muscle architectural adaptations that underpin them were quite different. Scheduling the Nordics after training showed the typical hypertrophic response shown here in Table 3 with an increase in, in both muscle thickness and the angle of the fibers. These are classic adaptations that would permit a greater transmission of force through the muscular tendon unit. However, these adaptations were not seen when Nordics were administered before training. This is consistent with the interference theory, which would suggest that the anabolic signal in cascade following strength training can be blunted when immediately followed by high intensity intermittent exercise, such as football training. However, the before training group did uh, demonstrate an increase in muscle fascicle length, which would also support the greater strength gains we observed in that group at, at the end range of motion. We can only speculate that the increased fascicle length in the before training group was induced by a greater stretch stimulus in a non-fatigued state. Uh, but certainly further work is required to, to explore this in more depth. So I guess the take home message here is that the Nordics are certainly effective irrespective of when you schedule them, when you schedule them. However, the adaptations likely differ dependent upon whether you administer them before or after training. Now, based on our data, proponents for the role of fascicle length in injury risk would opt to perform the Nordics before training. Um, alternatively, some of our previous work has shown that just a few Nordic repetitions could be fatiguing, particularly at, at long hamstring muscle length. Now, given the role of fatigue and injury risk, administering Nordics before training may exacerbate injury incidents during the subsequent session. The major challenge um, we encountered with this study um, was the low compliance rate of the intervention groups, with players completing on average 40% um, of the total number of repetitions that we prescribed in the program. Now, this wasn't due to disengagement of the players, but because at the recreational level, the training fields that they used were council assets, and in Australia, they're often closed in the event of rainfall and, and training is cancelled. But despite the low compliance, we still observed marked training gains. Interestingly, compliance was about 12% greater in the after-training group, 
which we put down to players um, jumping straight into field training if they turned up late uh, because of their work or, or personal commitments. So therefore, when you're planning the scheduling of injury prevention programs, particularly fatigue and eccentric exercises such as the Nordics, we'd recommend that um, you consider aspects such as the desired architectural adaptation, the standard of participation, um, the stage of the season, um, and certainly the intended typology and load of the concomitant football training session. It's really not so straightforward. Um, so thanks for listening. Um, we'd certainly welcome any comments or further discussion around this via email, or you can find most of us uh, either on ResearchGate or on Twitter. Thanks.